With Intel getting ready to launch their ARC series of graphics cards in the next couple of months, Q1 of 2022, and then progressively increasing performance of those releases throughout the remainder of the year, what should we actually expect from these cards uh, number one in terms of performance of course against their competitors nvidia and amd what card comparables should we be looking at for these intel graphics cards and number two probably the bigger piece that i am looking at is the price point of these cards with intel getting back into graphics cards what should we kind of expect? Are they looking to lowball the competition in order to gain some market share and get people buying Intel cards? Or are they trying to compete right out of the gate with the likes of AMD and Nvidia, even at the higher price tags? So if we jump over just to get a quick idea of what these Intel Arc Alchemist graphics cards are going to look like the type of performance we might expect so overall we're going to be seeing gpus that are using tsmc's six nanometer process very similar to what we are going to see with the next generation of radeon graphics cards as well um, in terms of the actual kind of compute units that we will see from these cards so the entry level arc alchemist gpu will have 128 execution units all the way up to 512 which should be the one that everyone's kind of been touting as this actual gaming card that gamers will be able to buy and use in a replacement of an amd or an nvidia card and we're even expecting some other really good uh, numbers from these cards both in terms of clock speeds vram so six gigs of gddr6 on their lowest tier card all the way up to 16 gigs of gddr6 on that high end one and in terms of the actual launch date, they're all supposed to be coming out Q1 2022. I would expect a lot more of those entry level cards to be seen in the first part of 2022. And then as we shift on towards the end part of this year to see a lot more demand and a lot more supply of those higher end 512 execution unit cards. Um, so here is a general idea of what these cards are expected to launch at. So $199 for that 128 execution unit uh, graphics card, 399 for the mid tier one, and then 599 for that upper tier graphics card from Intel. These are kind of an overall ballpark from late last year and early this year, but let's jump into some more recent news and see exactly what we might expect. So Intel recently announced that they're expecting to sell 4 million cards this year in 2022, and the majority of those cards, like I mentioned, are expected to be that 128 execution unit version, so that entry level budget card. And looking into some more of the technical details of the Intel statement, they're expecting to sell 4 million GPUs, but at an earned revenue of $300 million. So with some quick math, 300 million uh, in, in revenue, 4 million cards sold, you'd expect a price of $75 on average. But I definitely wouldn't expect this uh, underestimate to actually come to fruition when these cards eventually hit the market. But I might expect a card like the 128 execution unit entry level card to come out at a closer to $150, probably right in the middle uh, or close to the middle of that $200 uh, all the way down to the $75 estimate for what this card should release at. And the interesting part of this card is that it doesn't really have super compelling graphics performance for a dedicated GPU, most likely losing out to the next generation of integrated graphics from AMD that we should see on their 6000 series laptop chips. So if you're not looking for anything crazy in terms of performance, most likely 1080p 60fps, maybe even having to bump those settings down to 720p. So looking at closer to like a GT 1030, 1050, or a 6500 XT from AMD, uh, you should be kind of in this ballpark range of getting a graphics card like this entry level Arc Alchemist. But if you are looking to maybe spend a little bit more on a card and you haven't been able to get your hands on anything from Nvidia or AMD, um, we're not going to be seeing the super high performance card from Intel that we can get from those uh, other vendors. So either like a 6800 XT, 6900 XT, a 3080 or a 3090, we're not going to see that level of performance from Intel. Uh, and as some recent reports have shown, we're probably not going to even see the likes of 3070 performance to even 
you know, AMD 6700 XT performance. It's performing quite lower than a 3070 or the 6700 XT, sitting much closer to an RTX 2070. So you can see here, if you compared it to Nvidia's RTX 3070, you're looking at 40% slower performance from this DG512. Now it is just a sample. Of course, it's not going to be the end card that we're going to get from Intel. There's probably some tweaks that they're still going to make in terms of VBIOS and things like that, which should hopefully see the performance increase, but you're probably not going to see the performance, the raw performance of a 3070 or even an AMD 6700. XT. And if we jump into the numbers a little bit more, this coming from videocards.com, you can see the 512 execution unit. So the, the DG512 sitting at right around that 2060 super to 2070 level of performance, sitting hundred or sitting 11% under the RTX 3060, sitting under a 2070 super, a 6700 XT, and definitely under a 3070, way below a 3070 for that matter. Like I said, there should still be some more tweaks here and there, but I definitely wouldn't expect that launch price estimate of $599 for this card. So seeing that the launch price, the MSRP of an RTX 3060 was $329, of course, with the supply and demand constraints for those cards, prices rose exponentially. You're probably getting a $450 or $500 RTX 3060 nowadays but I would expect a similar price point for these Intel GPUs, somewhere in the neighborhood of $350 to $400 at the time of launch. Intel's going to want to try to gain some market share early on, get some of their devoted Intel CPU fans buying these Intel graphics chips. And the only way to do that is to price them competitively, price them under the competition, being the 3060 if you were to look at it from Nvidia, or maybe like a 6600 XT, a little bit under a 6700 XT from AMD. So maybe even expect these to be a little bit lower than that 349 or $400 price point. But of course, Intel could definitely make up some ground. But of course, this is only one benchmark with Geekbench 5. Hopefully the other performance tests that will eventually come out show that this card is much more capable in game and much more capable in other use cases, whether that be CAD or rendering or whatever it might be. Hopefully, over the next month or so, some numbers start to come out that show that this is much closer to that 3070 counterpart that we were expecting it to perform up to. But even so, I would expect 379, 399 to kind of be the top end for this card just so that Intel can gain the market share, gain it early when they eventually do release their next version of Intel Arc Celestial is what I believe it's going to be called, which should compete with the next generation of Nvidia and AMD cards. But I'm interested to see what you guys are thinking. Should we expect higher price point, lower price point than what I'm predicting for these cards? I'd love to hear your uh, thoughts down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed the take, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, get subscribed to the channel and I hope to see you guys in the next one.